Well, here's today's fun. It's another Liebert system. And we've got an air conditioning system. They put a remote condenser on it. It's a nice one. But you can see the air conditioning unit here. Frost coming back to the compressor, and that's a telltale sign of this here is your evaporator coil. And that's just lovely. They're wondering why they're not getting any air conditioning in this store. And here's your condens your filters. They're just plugged up solid. But uh, this is a heat reclaim system. It sends the um, hot gas discharge in the winter time. It's a three-way valve. It sends a hot gas discharge to these uh, condensers that are in the airflow, and it puts the heat back into the store. The, the heat goes from the air in the store into the frozen food cases and the meat cases, and then it gets absorbed into the Freon. It gets taken up here. Instead of just being blown away in the condensers, they'll take it to this con inside condenser, indoor condenser, and the heat is now put back into the uh, airflow to store, so you're not you're saving heat pretty much. It's a good idea. A lot of these old systems have been uh, cannibalized and taken apart. But the guy that was working on this was using um, was afraid to change the refrigerant over over the years. So there's MP39 in the systems, and this uh, freezer has 408 in it. And they're both being eliminated, so these are eventually this will all be new. Now here's something that's kind of interesting. It's your oil safety switch. And what it does is it, if you don't, and this is your oil pump, and oil, oil and refrigerant travel through the system together, and it's important to get the oil to come back to the compressor. And if the oil level drops too low, and the oil pump isn't producing any pressure, and that's over here, that this fitting over here, and this senses, this control senses the uh, oil sump area, the, the low side, and the oil pump. And the pump should be, I believe it was something like 10 or 15 pounds pressure more than the suction pressure. And if that's not there, there's a heater in here that overheats in like six, uh, 160 seconds or 190 seconds, something like that. And if, which means you don't have oil coming back. And then this system will, this control will shut the compressor down like that. That's a way to test it pretty much. But we have to come up on the roof then and reset the button. And you may have to do it a couple times until oil starts coming back. Now, here's something interesting. This guy that uh, was doing the work here was afraid to change refrigerants over. So he put a new compressor on there and he put MP39 in the system. And it has Alka benzene oil. And Alka benzene oil is very common to have uh, oil return problems. And this oil safety control on this one, it's bypassed. And they put the two wires together so it's non-functional, which means that this compressor doesn't have oil protection. They did that because of the Alka benzene oil. The level will drop, the oil will <coughs> hang up in the um, evaporators and not come back. So it's important. Uh, so a cure for it is just by putting 15 or 20 percent POE oil in on top of it, that will move the oil, the Alka benzene oil back. But what I'm going to do is I showed it to the uh, owner, the store owner, it's another Cleveland Indian. Uh, that I showed him how this control needed to be changed and the oil, uh, what I'll do is I'll siphon the oil out. It's over there. Uh, this is, it's like this. You take this, you have to pump the system down so no pressure is inside of it. And then, um, this compressor is running very hot. That's not good. It's 
the superheat's probably very high on this one. And what that does is it puts a, a strain on the, the motor and the refrigeration parts. That's why that's why this should be colder. Anyhow, um, and this has alka benzene oil in it too. But what you do is you pump the system down to zero pounds pressure. Then you remove this plug. You don't want to remove the plug with pressure in there because you'll end up with an oil bath. I had one customer do that. He, he thought he could, he saw the oil level was halfway down. He thought he could put oil in it. So he took the plug out and it, and it was inside of his store. So all the boxes of Tide and Cheerios got coated with oil. It was a mess. He said he'll never do that again. But uh, sometimes people know enough to be dangerous. Uh, I'll siphon, I have a, a siphon pump. And what I'll do is I'll take the oil, the old zero alka benzene oil out and I'll put POE oil in it and I'll change this from MP39 over to one of the, probably 134A because then I don't have to change the expansion valve. I can leave the old R12 expansion valve in there. But this system's low on gas. That's, that's why this compressor is running so hot and not getting enough these compressors are suction cooled. The Freon coming back cools the compressor up. That's why in air conditioning, you don't have sight glasses, you don't have receiver tanks. The uh, superheat measurement is critical on an air conditioning system. It's not so critical on a refrigeration system. I'm able to see it right here. <coughs> and I'm able to feel the compressor. It's, it's hot, much hotter than it Very hot, actually. This one may even have a problem with uh, valve plate leaking from the high side to the low side. You might be only working on one piston. This is the valve plate right here. And uh, you can pump the system down, front seat to the suction side, high side, get the gas out of it, and um, take these bolts off, take the head off, and you have a gasket on top and bottom and a valve plate. And the valve plate will have reeds on it. And as the pistons pump up, it pushes the reeds up. And then the reeds come down and reseed again. So you keep pushing gas to the high side of it. But sometimes those reeds will break. So you'll end up, uh, the, the gas will get pushed to the high side and come back to the low side, high side, low side. Then your compressor runs very, very hot. But, um, Quite a few years ago, when this system was brand new, I when I first moved up here, it was right in like around 1990, I went to work for the company that installed this, this system. It's a convenient food mart. Um, and I got it, one, one morning I was told to come over here and put a change of control or something, I forgot what it was. But it, had, it was winter time and it had snowed and the, technician that was here the day before that was working on it was kind of notorious for leaving caps off and things like that well he had taken the cover off and left the cover off the control panel here and there's a lot of fuses in here but it snowed that night and I came next morning and it looked like a scene from Dr. Zhivago that's what it reminded me of but this was all filled with snow and it was cold and the crystals didn't short out. Here's your main legs, and you got all. You look at all fuses. Um, it didn't. Nothing shorted out. It all. It was full of snow. And the, so what I did was, and it was about eight o'clock, eight fifteen in the morning. What I did was, I shut the power off. I ran down to the truck and got my CO2 tank, and I blew all the snow out of everything here, because within like another hour, the sun would have uh, warmed everything up enough. But this is kind of a good idea for companies with um, a lot of different technicians. And this company here kept track of um, what the last what was done on it, so the next guy comes along and the company can see what was. Um, but but that's. Uh, but now here's something else too: the freezer. And it's kind of common. The freezer is icing back here, frosting back, and this is. Um, common with Hussman they only put one defrost in a 24-hour period and they made it for like a 90 minutes sometimes they make it for 110 minutes and in the case there's a 
the frost termination sensor uh, clicks on so that if it's on the frost and it's done it's got all the ice melted after 40 minutes and the sensor warms up it makes contact and it'll trip the uh, the X uh, out and it will uh, come out of the frost but uh, what I what I found is like this is another walk-in freezer and here you have four defrosts in a 24-hour period and that's what I like to do put four defrosts on it at least and that's what I'm going to do on this one and that'll help prevent this when you have when you have one defrost on it after about five or six hours you get the evaporator coil gets a healthy frost buildup on it and that retards the heat transfer process into the evaporator coil uh, and then the system efficiency is out the window at that point so I don't understand why Hussman did that I'm sure they had a reason but I don't see it working properly and and what happens is after 12 hours you're getting a, a real healthy frost all the way back to the compressor at which time the um, uh, the re liquid refrigerant that goes down to the expansion valves gets sprayed isn't absorbing heat so it's coming back part liquid and part gas and you'll you, that's why you have frost coming back to the compressor and liquid refrigerant has very has no lubrication to it and um, what will happen is it's liquid refrigerants like dry fingernail polish remover it's, it's um, and it mixes with the oil so it changes the viscosity and then then what happens is your crankshaft and the bronze bearings and aluminum piston rods wear seriously and you'll go through a compressor uh, pretty easy like this compressor is brand new well a year old or I think it's a, a year and a half old I'm not sure but uh, that that's that's why you want to have um, enough defrost on the system oh, they're getting their Pepsi I parked out of the way enough okay well what I'm gonna do today is, is the uh, We get this white fluff lying around, and it uh, plugs up the condenser. This is a this is a condenser, and it's an upflow. And you can see you can see the dirt build up. it probably has some, it hasn't been cleaned out in a few years so I, I've got a pressure washer and my chemicals and I'm going to uh, foam it up and try to pressure wash it years ago in the 70s the pressure washers kind of first showed up at the refrigeration supply houses and they used to be these uh, big heavy things that cost a huge amount of money and are really hard pulling them up on the roof and I was in Connecticut near the seashore and the salt air had come in and every year I had to get uh, in here and not in this in that store and clean the uh, condensers off and um, the salt air would get destroyed aluminum and you the aluminum would deflate would just come out and flay handfuls of flakes it was terrible I remember spending the day up there pressure washing and pressure washing and I stopped one time <coughs> and I looked around the roof and there's air conditioning units and the air conditioning units had uh, horizontal evaporators on them and they were clean. We're here to, um, I'm sorry, they were vertical. Uh, where the, the rain was able to wash the condensers off. And here the horizontal would get plugged up like crazy. So after that, I would never install a, whenever I installed a, 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 a remote condenser, I would always put it in the vertical position so the rain could wash it. And I would make sure that the condenser coil would be away from, like this one I would have mounted sideways, or this way, put this on the bottom and this on the top, and stood it up. and 
face the fins away from the sun and uh, that way the, the rain would have a chance to wash it off I wouldn't have put it in this way uh, one year I had a, a big condenser on a supermarket and uh, we get these lake flies here there there this is one right here a little one that see that's a lake fly they don't bite but they get they hatch out of the lake in clouds there's clouds of them there's and, and there's you know thousands and thousands of them in a cloud and they just move along and one of these hatches hit this condenser and it they just got sucked into the fins and it was 10 o'clock at night the whole supermarket wasn't working I had to get up on the roof and the condenser was just plugged up and it was I didn't have this much space to get underneath it it was only like this much space and I had to crawl underneath this condenser this big condenser with my co2 bottle and I just had to get in there and blow it out and I was in this vortex of um, it was like a tornado in there of CO2 and dust and bugs and it was horrible but I got it cleaned out and got the system running but uh, it's a nice unit a nice condenser it's not, they put they added this on the condensers are just the condenser coil right in here that's the outside air condenser coil and that's the fans are uh, blown, blown heat out but this is a, a, a Liebert system and this is it's got heat reclaim in it and I've got to shut the air conditioning off now okay got a little work ahead of me later guys